Okay, now boring woman from Minnesota. <laughs> So, you know, <laughs> we got art out there too. <laughs> Thank you. That was fabulous. Fabulous. I think they deserve. So my dear colleagues from Chicago forgot to tell you what, when the dates for the next conference are in 2010. And that is, get your pens out, October 17 through the 20th. Thank you. So in August of this year, just a couple of months ago, Rocco Landisman, was confirmed by the U.S. Senate as the 10th Chairman of the National Endowment for the Arts. I feel like I'm, like Nancy Hanks has just entered the room and I'm channeling Nancy Hanks, <laughs> except I think she used to wear Chanel, so. All right, I'll get serious. It is. It's been a long conference, but it's been a great conference, hasn't it? Yes. All right. I'm going to start over. In August, Rocco Landisman was confirmed by the U.S. Senate as the 10th chairman of the, United, of the National Endowment for the Arts. Among many other accomplishments, Chairman Landisman earned a doctorate in dramatic literature at the Yale School of Drama. And I believe that this degree in drama is really going to help him on Capitol Hill. <laughs> on Broadway, he's won Tonys for groundbreaking works, including Big River and Angels in America. And if you've seen shows on Broadway, most likely you've been in one of the five theaters of his company, Jew Jamson. I won't read his impressive biography because we've put it in your program. And we want to focus on now. Now he is the NEA chairman, and he is really ready to work with all of us. I know this because I've spent some time with him. He was generous to spend a, a good couple of hours with me a few weeks ago in September in DC. And we talked about coming together, GIA and the NEA, working together on collaborations, how we can be better together, and as Janet Brown says, louder. He has a ton of energy for the work. The chairman has read Janet Brown's blog that asks him not to be wishy-washy. And I have a feeling that there is nothing wishy-washy about this chairman. And I say that with the greatest of respect. In fact, out of respect for the chairman, I'm seriously thinking of changing my name to Vico. <laughs> it is truly a great honor All joking aside, I am, <laughs> I really am very, very honored, as we should all be, that we are joined today by Chairman Rocco Landisman. Um, I, I couldn't help but, uh, but think as, as, as you're introducing me, and, and thanks for that, that fulsome introduction of, of uh, 
of my old boss, Jim Binger, uh, a former head of the McKnight Foundation. And uh, I go way back uh, with the McKnight Foundation in Minneapolis. And for me, it's a great kind of through line. I, I wish he could be here now. And, and I think he'd get a great kick out of it if he, uh, if he were. And it's a, it's a neat thing. I'm glad you're in this role as I'm, as I'm coming into mind, Vicki. Um, it's neat to look around the room and, and see so many familiar faces. I didn't, didn't, think, I, I didn't think I would. Hi. Um, and um, that's you know, reassuring as I, uh, as I begin what's, what's going to be, I think, an, an interesting journey. Anyway, hi to all of you. It's good to be back in Brooklyn, uh, where I lived happily for 18 years. Um, OK, whatever you want. OK, thanks, Tomer. OK, is that better? OK. Um, if, you can, if you can linger here for a little while, uh, get to Coney Island, a colorful corner of a vanishing America, which has thankfully been marked for preservation by Amanda Burden and her enlightened colleagues in the New York City government. It's, it's fantastic, and I hope it's going to stay that way a long time. And you should also get to Peter Luger's for what is without a doubt the greatest stake in America, bar none. Uh, I just tried to get a reservation. Uh, 1030 was the, uh, was the best I could do. My wife, Debbie, uh, can't be here today. Uh, she's at the Salzburg Seminar, but I wish she could be. Her career has been in philanthropy, and the very last thing she ever expected of me is that I would become a grant maker in the arts. <laughs> Needless to say, I never expected it either. Uh, however, Debbie is in a way represented here by another grant maker, the legendary Joan Shigakawa. Uh, here she is, here's Joan. Uh, whom I found through Debbie's network and whom I selfishly seduced from the Rockefeller Foundation to join me at the NEA. So far, it's the best move I've made. Our conference title, Navigating the Art of Change, refers with some subtlety to our present circumstances. And since I'm always reading about how blunt I am, I'll go along and translate that as, the news is bad. You don't need to hear from me the litany about exactly how bad the news is. You live with it every day. Your endowments are devastated. Your presidents and boards are steering money away from the arts. Corporations, in the interest of better optics, are having to take their names off arts contributions already committed. Well, this is starting to sound like a litany. The rational and perfectly appropriate, appropriate response to bad news is discouragement. And believe me, I can empathize. I, too, have found much to be discouraged about. I've been at the NEA eight weeks. And already, I have my own litany. The NEA is funding porn in California. The agency has become a propagandist for the Obama administration's programs. And to truly add insult to injury, we've been told vis-a-vis -vis our share of the stimulus money that we in the arts don't even work. One congressman, one congressman summed up this view perfectly when he stated, I'm quoting, how can we spend $50 million on the National Endowment for the Arts when we, when we can spend that money creating real jobs like building roads? I should pause here to note that the $50 million is one, one six thousandth of one percent of the money in the stimulus bill. But more importantly, if you are, say, a musician who through long study and practice and talent has risen to, risen to play first violin in a symphony orchestra, um, please understand that although you have two kids to put through college, you don't have a real job. Discouraging? Just a little. But here's the thing. The rational and appropriate response is the wrong one. The right response is the irrational and inappropriate one, optimism. I will elaborate. 